This is going to be a review on the most commonly questioned topics uh, on the endocrine system. Uh, starting with the eyes, it's very important to know that the eye problems you see with Graves' disease are because of inflammation and that steroids can help with that. Congenital hypothyroidism is called creatinism and the baby is going to have a very large belly, uh, protruding umbilicus. He could have a very large tongue, maybe some congenital delays. And because he's going to have not enough, because he won't have enough T3 or T4, you can expect his TSH to be turned on and pretty high. Next, the parathyroid glands. Know that what stimulates them more than anything is phosphate. Phosphate stimulates them. So if you have renal failure, it's not going to be the calcium. It's going to be the phosphate that stimulates them more than anything. It really boosts them into overdrive. Talking about a overdrive parathyroid gland, a primary hyperparathyroid, hyperparathyroidism, excuse me, osteitis fibrosis cystica, OFC. You're going to have way too much calcium, so they'll present with bones, stones, abdominal overtones. And because they have cysts, on the bones that's gonna appear as empty or white spaces and the fibrosis is actually brown. So you have brown and white spaces so they may say it looks like salt and pepper on microscopy. Know that anytime you do surgery on the thyroid or the parathyroid gland, calcium can get out of whack. It can become too high, it can become too low. Talking about calcium problems, if you have a patient who has a big trauma and needs a lot of blood transfusions, they can also get low calcium and the way that works is because in the stored blood to keep it anticoagulated you add citrulline um, and citrulline is anticoagulant that can chelate the calcium. Moving on to the adrenal glands, uh, 21 versus 11 hydroxylase deficiency. It's important to know that the 11 hydroxylase deficiency presents with hypertension. I kind of remember that with the little line between the, the two ones, looks like an H. So high blood pressure or hypertension is with 11. Both of them present with virilization at puberty though. The difference is going to be again, 11 has the high blood pressure whereas 21 doesn't. In fact, 21, because you have a low blood pressure, you can expect renin to be turned on. Um, you could expect uh, increased sodium. Uh, you keep your sodium and you lose potassium, so you may even have some metabolic alkalosis or vomiting involved. The treatment, um, sorry, the diagnosis, the diagnosis for a 21, uh, hydroxylase deficiency is you're going to have increased 17-hydroxyprogesterone. So 17-OHP will be increased in a 21 deficiency. And the treatment for a 21 deficiency is to give steroids to cause a feedback so it suppresses the ACTH. Next we have primary hyperaldosteronism. Important to know that because the problem is with the gland, renin is going to be suppressed so you have a low renin um, you do have a lot of salts and you are losing potassium, um, but you don't have edema because of the aldosterone estate escape mechanism. Um, the treatment, if you think about the problem here, is going to be that you are keeping too much salt and you're losing potassium. So you want to give them a diuretic. Um, Epluronone has the best one because it's, it's a potassium sparing diuretic and with a good profile. Addison's disease. Uh, it can be seen, it's an autoimmune disorder, so if someone has Addison's disease, if you have a patient with it, they may have other autoimmune disorders. Finally, if you have chromocytoma, episodic headaches, and you want to treat it alpha, first with the alpha blocker and then the beta blocker. The last organ that we'll touch is the pancreas. Um, the pancreas, know that insulin beta 2 stimulates insulin release, and that glucagon works with GS alpha mainly on the liver most of its actions of glucagon are going to be on the liver. Regarding diabetes, the number one cause of death with patients with diabetes is going to be heart attacks. If you have gestational diabetes, the baby will be born with beta islet cell hyperplasia and the treatment for a hypoglycemic episode is going to be intramuscular glucose. Intramuscular glucose is the best way to deliver it. There are three medications that are important for diabetes, metformin, sulfonylureas, and the glitazones. Metformin, know that this one is used in pregnancy, has a very good profile. So it's used in pregnancy, it does not cause you to gain any weight. Um, the problem with metformin though is that it can cause lactic acidosis. So if you want to check if they have renal failure, so check the creatinine, that's very important. After metformin is the, uh, the sulfonylureas. Um, I imagine the sulfon, like someone surfing the entire day, these are going to be the long-acting ones. 
And what's important to know about that is if you miss a meal, you can become hypoglycemic. So an older person who maybe misses meals, this is not a medication to put them on. Very importantly, with sulfonylureas, you can have disulfiram-like reactions, which means that if you drink alcohol, you can have this terrible, terrible reaction. So if someone's on a sulfonylurea, if you have a diabetic patient drinking alcohol that gets a terrible reaction, think sulfonylureas. The glitazones are the last one we'll talk about. Those can cause edema um, and weight gain. Out of all the things we talked about in the endocrine system, if you want to narrow it down to the three most important things to know, would be creatinism, no congenital hypothyroidism, know the medications over here, particularly the disulfiram-like reactions in sulfonylureas is asked very commonly, and also know 21 versus 11 hydroxylase deficiency. These are, in my opinion at least, the three most important, most commonly tested um, topics in the endocrine system. Thank you for listening. I wish you good luck.